lecturer in university, Olympic training centers, and for Strength and Conditioning Federation all over the world, pretty much. And here in Poland, I really appreciate the seriousness and integrity of the Polish Strength and Conditioning, Strength and Conditioning Association in doing business. So for this reason, they will have me back again and again. I would say the knowledge level is in line with the rest of Europe, uh, which also means it's above what I find, for example, in South America or Asia. The practical knowledge, the strength training knowledge here uh, and strength training tradition here is pretty strong. So on a practical, uh, from, from the practical uh, point of view, uh, Polish strength and conditioning coaches and trainers are quite knowledgeable. Um, as far as the audience that I get when I uh, teach here, uh, uh, I get mostly junior coaches or national level coaches, whereas in places like Italy or Brazil, for instance, I also get uh, elite level coaches uh, from track and field, from combat sports or uh, motor sports, uh, volleyball, soccer, uh, basketball. The sports strength coach uh, certification course is the base course for the International Strength and Conditioning Institute. Uh, this doesn't mean that it's the easiest in actuality, it's probably the hardest because in these three days, of course, we teach the basis of planning and programming for uh, for athletes, and especially the sports strength coach certification course is focused on the integration of strength training into the uh, training program uh, of an athlete, which also includes the specific training. The second level is more focused on periodization for speed and endurance, so uh, it's more of a speed and conditioning uh, spe specialization. And this knowledge integrates with the strength, uh, strength programming and planning and programming of the first level so that we create uh, an all round strength and conditioning coach. I've always been a, a, an athlete, let's say, and I was lucky enough more than 20 years ago to move to the US and finish my study in exercise science there and intern at the University of Texas uh, with one of the world's best uh, sprints and jumps coach in the world who is, uh, whose name is uh, Dan Pfaff. And after that, I've been working uh, with track and field. In 2002, I uh, got my first two international medals uh, as a coach in track and field, silver at the Commonwealth Games and gold at the World Cup in the 100 meter with a, a Nigerian sprinter. And after that, I spent uh, 10 seasons in soccer, seven seasons in volleyball. Um, six years ago, I started working also with combat sports. And three years later, I had an um, uh, international, intercontinental uh, title winner in boxing in the IBF. And the same year, uh, a Brazilian, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu fighter won the London Open IBJJF. And today, uh, I'm the strength and conditioning coach for the Philippines track and field coach. Uh, you know, track and field association and we are uh, looking forward to competing in the next Asian Championships and see the results of our work. To be, I think to be successful in life overall you always uh, get to have this attitude of the constant learner. You must never think that if you have arrived and you can learn from so many people in, in your field so keeping this attitude of constantly learning.
A long time ago, I read a chapter on uh, training planning in a manual of the Italian Track and Field uh, Federation. And that pretty much changed my, my life because I've always been a very cerebral kind of person. And, and reading how uh, planning uh, was a mean to manage the complexity of the training process really fascinated me. Uh, and so that's how I got, I eventually got to be one of the world's experts in, in training planning. Uh, but it all started with, with that chapter so many years ago. So that was one. The other one uh, was Periodization Training for Sports, uh, written by Tudor Bompa. Uh, I found that book so practical and so structured. And already then I was thinking that you have to contextualize uh, your approach to planning and programming depending uh, on the characteristics of your athletes or the characteristics uh, of the sport. But again, it was so structured and practical that I kept going back uh, again and again to that book. And uh, again, eventually, I became the co-author of that book. <laughs> Recovery and regener regeneration side in, a tra in the training process is very important. You know, it's not something that you can overlook and expect the best possible results. So uh, recovery and regeneration got to be always integrated with the actual training side. Uh, so normally my, my athletes get a lot of soft tissue therapy throughout the year. Uh, in the form of my fascial release and deep tissue massage, pretty much, all year long. Now, uh, when we get to the uh, competitive phase, the focus on recovery is even more. So, uh, I also stress the quality and duration of, uh, of sleep. So we use certain applications to check each athlete's uh, quality and duration of the sleep throughout the year, but even there, when we get to the competitive phase, we get even more, we stress this, this aspect even more, you know? we, we stress the athletes over this aspect even, even more. And, and certain uh, recovery means we only use in the competitive phase, like uh, cryotherapy, for instance, because uh, it hinders a little bit the, the adaptations to training, so, in the competitive phase when adaptation is not, is not the focus anymore, rather the performance and the recovery from the performance, then we use cryotherapy. And whereas throughout the year, we might use more con contrast showers. in volleyball. That was in volleyball a long time ago. Uh, that was my first year in volleyball and I was strength and conditioning coaching um, a provincial level team uh, in a big province. So in our championship there were so many so many teams. Uh, and I was the only strength and conditioning coach in that league and also in the following league which is the regional league. But that year we killed the, the, the championship. We, we won the championship with five weeks in advance to the end, to the actual end of the championship. And what happened is that the following year we were in the regional league and all the teams in the provincial league and the regional league that, that season had a strength and conditioning coach. So my joke with my students was uh, I created more jobs than Silvio Berlusconi. If I tell you one thing that makes me think of Poland all year long, you will laugh. <laughs> because, um, so you, you guys here, the guys wear uh, short hair. And so your hairdressers 
I used to work with short hair, you know? So uh, last year I came here and I got a great haircut <laughs> here in Warsaw. And both me and my girlfriend at the time were, were saying, man, got to go back to Poland. That, those were the best uh, aircut you ever got. So uh, all year long, I'm thinking of coming back here to get an, an aircut. Apart from that, I really like the old town here in Warsaw. I mean, even, yet, even last night, it was freezing. And I was like, wow, I love, I love, this, I love this town. And I'm coming from Tuscany in Italy. It's one of the world's most beautiful places, so it tells a lot the, how beautiful, at least I think, uh, Warsaw is. I'll be there and thank you for having me.